Welcome to Good Friday. I've called it Die Day. It's the day when we remember that the Lord Jesus died for us. I want you to remember that Jewish days are counted from six o'clock in the evening through the following 24 hours. So their day starts with an evening, they then have a night, they have a morning and an afternoon. That's the way their days run. Yesterday we spoke about the Passover and we talked about how um, it was celebrated in the evening. Jesus celebrating the Passover with his disciples. But what day did he actually celebrate the Passover on? If we read the scriptures carefully, John is suggesting that Jesus celebrates the Passover on the 14th of Nisan. Now, this is the day before the, uh, the week of celebration for Passover begins. Nisan is the first month uh, of the um, ecclesiastical year. It's the seventh month of the civil year. Um, and Passover itself can be celebrated on any day uh, of the week in that month, but it begins on the 15th day of the month. So it doesn't have to be on a Friday. It can be any day um, of the week. Uh, and what normally happens on the 14th day is that in the evening, uh, the women usually will go around the house, clear out all the leaven. They'll then go to bed. They'll get up in the morning. They'll clear out uh, the house as best, best they can, make sure there's no leaven hiding. Leaven is meant to be a symbol of, of evil. Um, and then they take their lamb to the temple or the synagogue, but the temple here in this story. Uh, and the, the lamb is slaughtered or sacrificed at three o'clock in the afternoon and cooked ready for um, eating on the 15th day of Nisan. And it looks as though Jesus celebrates the Passover one day early because he knows he's going to go to the cross the following day. Which would mean that during the Passover feast that he shares with the disciples, there is no lamb on the table because the lamb is seated at the table. Furthermore, Jewish records um, tell us that uh, Jesus died on the 14th, not the 15th, on the day of preparation, not on the 15th. Uh, and also um, astronomical records suggest that there was no 15th of Nisan on any Friday between AD 27 and AD 34. So maybe that's why Paul says to the Corinthians that Christ our Passover lamb has been sacrificed. Remember that John the Baptist in introducing the Lord Jesus says, behold, the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. So perhaps that's when events happen on the, uh, the day we call Good Friday. Who is dying here? Who is dying? Well, it's Jesus. Well, you say, well, I know it's Jesus. Well, not everybody does. It's the Jesus of the Gospels. The Gnostic writers, the people who had um, mystical views about life, uh, suggested that Jesus never really had a body because matter was evil. For Jesus, as God, to have had a body uh, would have made him evil. So he only appeared, which is the way dokeo in Greek, and the Docetics were part of the... Uh, uh, Docetists, Docetists, sorry about that, uh, were the ones who believed that Jesus seemed to have a body but left no footprints in the sand. Another group of Gnostics were called the Corinthians or the Serinthians, uh, and they said that the uh, divine Christ came upon Jesus at the baptism when the dove descended on him and left him before Calvary. So only a man died for three years, he was God but he died uh, as a man. And of course, that's not what scripture teaches. It says that Jesus was a man who died for us, a man with a real body, not his twin, as some people have suggested, not Judas, as other works have suggested recently, not even Barabbas. Barabbas means the son of the father. Of course, Jesus is the son of the father. Uh, and some accounts uh, suggest that it was Jesus who is called the Christ, was referenced by Pilate because there was also Jesus Barabbas, Jesus, the son of the father. The one who died is Jesus, the eternal son of God. 
So we've dealt with when it happened and we've looked at who is dying at the cross. Where does it take place? Well, that's a little bit easier, but also fairly difficult as well. It says in scriptures that he dies outside the city at the place of the skull. In Latin, the word is calvaria, and that either means the bald head or the skull. In Aramaic, the language that Jesus spoke, it's Golgotha, and it's on a hill outside of the city. Most scholars prefer either the spot now covered by the Church of the Holy Sepulchre or a hillock called Gordon's Calvary, just north of the Damascus Gate. What's happening here? Well, Jesus is being crucified. I know that you know that, but do you really understand what crucifixion entailed? Crucifixion was started either by the Egyptians or the Persians, um, and the Persians would sharpen a stick at both ends and they, the victim would be impaled and raised up from the ground because they didn't want their god, uh, Omazd, the Zoroastrian god, uh, to be offended by this uh, criminal dying with his feet on the, the holy earth. And uh, maybe you recall Lord of the Flies, where the, the hunters are sharpening a stick at two ends to kill Ralph and Piggy. Well, that's what that's all about. The cross could either be T-shaped, it could be Y-shaped, or if you imagine a small T with um, a bit, bit sticking above the, uh, the capital T. But it's Probable that Jesus died on a capital T with no headrest, as it were, above the um, the beam, the horizontal beam. And there was something called the patibulum, which was the horizontal beam that the criminal was required to carry around town as far around town as he possibly could with a, a label around his neck uh, referring to his crime. And that's why Pilate says this is Jesus, the king of the Jews. And while he's going round, he's being mocked. Isn't he? He's got a crown of thorns on his head. He's been beaten to a pulp. Uh, Roman beatings were very severe. They uh, stood on either side of a man and whipped him, uh, the Roman soldiers. And they had pieces of leather with bits of bone and metal sewn into it. And they would tear strips out, uh, crisscross across the back. And um, uh, deep-seated arteries would be, um, would be revealed. Many a strong man died from such a beating. And Jesus isn't able to carry the cross. Simon of Cyrene is forced to carry the cross. Again, it's that uh, business of Arangeo that we spoke about the other day, the ability to requisition people to do what you want them to do. The victim would be nailed at the wrists, but not at the feet. The feet are loosely bound. There's a little platform at the foot of the, uh, the cross, maybe about three feet from the floor. And uh, the victim could pull themselves up because uh, as they would sink down, the, the blood um, would get into the lungs. The, the air would be coming out of the lungs rather and they couldn't breathe. So to, to get any respite, they would have to pull themselves back up again, tearing their, their wrists. Um, and uh, sometimes you could last for a whole week being crucified, going mad from hunger um, and thirst. There is physical suffering here. There is psychological suffering as people mock at you. There's relational suffering. Uh, Jesus is beaten and crowned. He's offered a drug. He refuses the drug from the women who bring the drug. But he does take wine vinegar offered to him on a sponge, lifted up to him by hyssop. Now, hyssop's a kind of a grass. It's not the usual thing to hold up. But hyssop was also bound together and it was used to, to dip into the, the blood of the lamb at the very first Passover, to daub the, the door frame so that the angel of death would pass over. So there's, there's obviously a, a visual reference and memory there. Also, we read in the crucifixion stories that not a bone of the Passover lamb was to be broken. And again, Jesus, no bone of him uh, is broken. We also see the soldiers um, dicing for uh, his woven coat. They split the, the other four um, parts of his clothing between them, but they then dice for the woven coat. And it was traditional for a mother to weave a coat for her son before he went out into the world. And there's Mary at the cross watching the soldiers dicing for that coat. I want you to be certain in your mind that he's dead. Because when the centurion comes and uh, pierces him with the spear, when he's pierced, blood and water come out. The blood has come from the heart, but the blood has seeped into the water sack around the heart, the pericardium, and mixed together there. Uh, and that's a sign that Jesus' heart has been pierced, or if you prefer, 
He's died of a broken heart as he dies for the sins of mankind. It's a sacrificial uh, death. That's why he dies. Let's try to understand this. There's a word for atonement. Jesus is dying an atoning death for us. This is really difficult, but stay with me. The word is hilasmos, and it can either be translated expiation or propitiation. Now, here's the premise. God is holy and angry with sin. Man is sinful and separated from God. If we translate this word for atonement as expiation, it suggests that a ransom or a death has to be paid. And that's what Jesus is doing on the cross. He's paying that ransom and he's redeeming us. He's setting us free from the penalty of sin and death. He dies as our vicarious substitute. If you understand the halasmus, the atonement, as a propitiation, it's suggesting that Christ's sacrifice satisfies God. God's anger is appeased. God's anger against sin is appeased. And then we are reconciled to God. God is never reconciled to us. We are reconciled to God. We read in scripture that Jesus was made sin so that we might be made the righteousness of God uh, in him. And Peter says, you know that you are ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your fathers, not with perishable things such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without blemish or spot. He is our sacrifice and the one who offers the sacrifice. It's perhaps put best in that beautiful old hymn, There is a green hill far away, outside a city wall, where our dear Lord was crucified, who died to save us all. There was no other good enough to pay the price of sin. He only could unlock the gate of heaven and let us in. Oh, dearly, dearly has he loved, and we must love him too, and trust in his redeeming blood, and try his work to do. This Good Friday, this die day, thank God for Jesus. May the Lord bless you and keep you, and make his face to shine upon you, and give you peace.